everybody. Uh, welcome to today's webinar on uh, an introduction to multi-sensor points. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm Rihanna and I'm a member of the support team. Um, and in just a moment, I'm going to be handing over to Kit, another one of our support engineers. Um, but before I do, I just want to go through uh, a few bits and pieces about what you can expect today. So um, first of all, the webinar is being recorded. Uh, I believe this should be sent out to you in the next day or so. So if you want a refresher afterwards, you'll be able to watch the recording afterwards. Um, as you joined this webinar, you would have been put on mute. So uh, we just ask that you please keep your microphones on mute throughout the duration, just so that everything runs smoothly. Um, the presentation itself should last for roughly 30 minutes, uh, but we will have some time for questions at the end of the presentation. Uh, you can submit these questions at any time. So basically, we've got a, a control panel at the side of your screen. Uh, so you should be able to see a little image of that. If you uh, click on the arrow, that should open it out for you. Uh, you can open and close it through there. And there is a little questions panel um, in there where you can submit your questions. So basically, if you think of something you want to ask, just stick it in that question box and we'll get to those at the end. Uh, so for now, I will hand you over to Kit. Oh, thank you, Rihanna. And welcome everyone to the webinar. Uh, as Rihanna mentioned, this webinar topic is multi-sensor points, which is an RT range feature. Um, and before we go into the actual multi-sensor point uh, feature, we're just going to have a look at how RT range works and how it worked before multi-sensor points was introduced and then looking at why uh, we develop this feature um, and hopefully that will show you why it's a useful feature. So to start off with, um, RT range measurements initially um, you could only get RT range measurements from one point on the hunter vehicle uh, and they'd be relative to one particular point on the target vehicle. So this is how the sort of earliest versions of RT range worked. Uh, you could configure that point to be anywhere on the hunter vehicle. Um, but it would just be one location and all your measurements would be coming from that point. Uh, later on, we introduced a feature called polygons, uh, where you're able to um, create a 2D profile of the sort of perimeter of your vehicle, and then your measurements would come from the closest point uh, on one polygon to the closest point of another. Um, so this would show that the RT range measurements can actually be output from anywhere on that polygon. And it's not always clear uh, exactly where on the polygon those measurements are going to be coming from. Um, so for example, in this sort of scenario where you have a target pulling up alongside the, the hunter vehicle, the closest point between those two polygons can kind of be anywhere really between where those uh, polygons kind of overlap in the longitudinal direction. So these sort of gray arrows here, these, these could represent where the measurements are being made from. Um, so at any time, you always have the closest distance from hunter to target. But if you care about um, the distance from a particular point, um, you'd have to be uh, using this sort of previous method. And then you'd only be able to use one point on the vehicle. So now we go on to why we introduced uh, the multi-sensor points feature. Um, and this was sort of developed particularly for the sort of sensor validation uh, testing, where you'd have multiple points on the vehicle that you wanted measurements from. Um, and if you wanted multiple uh, measurements from multiple points on the vehicle before we introduced the multi-sensor point feature, your options would be to configure um, a particular sensor point on the hunter um, and then run your test and then you'd have to reconfigure um, with the sensor point of the hunter at a different location, perform the test again, uh, or alternatively perform the test once in real time and then collect the data and post-process the data with different uh, hunter sensor points. Uh, so it is kind of a time-consuming process. Um, and such the multi-sensor point feature was born. 
Um, this feature really just allows you to collect data from multiple points on the vehicle um, in one, one test all at the same time. So now we'll have a look at the multi-sense points and uh, how to use and configure them. So this is like a visual representation of how the multi-sense point features work, uh, where the red sort of fans are the field of views of the, the multi-sense points. And you can see that you can set up multiple multi-sense points on the vehicle and give them all a field of view. And then they sort of output measurements depending on what they see in that field of view. So this feature was actually added at the end of 2018. Um, so December 2018, uh, which is before the RT3000 v3 was released. So any uh, RT3000 v3 product will be able to use this feature as long as you've got the um, RT range vehicle to vehicle feature code enabled. Uh, if you've got an RT range S device, so the device on the right, then you will require the 18.12.07 R1 firmware, which is still the latest uh, version of the RT range firmware, but as I mentioned, it was released in uh, December 2018. So we're just going to look at what more sense points are and sort of how many you can have and what sort of characteristics they have. Uh, so you can have up to 12 multi-sensor points configured uh, on your Hunter vehicle. Um, and when you're configuring them, uh, each individual multi-sensor points has its own uh, field of view that you can configure, uh, its own position on the Hunter vehicle. And it only outputs measurements when there's a, um, a target inside the uh, field of view of that multi-sensor point. So they don't output if you had 12 multi-sensor points uh, on the vehicle, uh, they don't just all output constant data. Um, you only get data from them uh, if there's a target in their field of view. Uh, and you get, um, if there's a target in lots of their field of view, obviously you get uh, data from all of the multi-sensor points. And the data you get from them is obviously extra measurements that you wouldn't have been able to get before. Um, so you still get all of the usual RT range um, measurements. So when you're using multi-sensor points, you'll still have polygons configured. So you'll still be getting those uh, polygon to polygon measurements. You just get the additional multi-sensor point to polygon measurements as well. So now we're just going to look at what the extra measurements are that you get when you um, have multi-sensor points configured. So uh, the first thing, the first measurement you get from a multi-sensor point is the distance from that multi-sensor point uh, to a hunter, which is in the field of view of that multi-sensor point. Uh, so the, hunt, the targets will require to have polygons, um, and then you get the distance from the multi-sensor point, so wherever that is on the vehicle, um, from that point uh, to the closest part of the target polygon. The second measurement you get is the percentage of target which is visible to that multi-sensor point. Um, so this is why you need polygons uh, set up so that you can have a uh, section of them uh, which is visible for the um, multi-sensor point to pick up. Uh, so in this sort of example here, you can see only a fraction of this pedestrian target is in view of the multi-sensor point. Um, other polygon, other target polygons can obscure the sort of view of the other targets. So here you can see that this part car is uh, taking up some of the field of view of the multi-sensor point and only allowing a tiny bit of the pedestrian to be seen. And you can sort of compare the RT range measurement with your uh, sensor as well. And then the last extra measurement that you get from enabling multi-sensor points is the percentage of field of view occupied by each target. So this just tells you, um, well, as, as it says on the tin, like how much of your field of view is occupied by a particular target. Um, in the example, you can see that half of this like angle 
is occupied by this target here, so you've got 50% occupation. So now we're just going to look at how to configure multi-sense points, and I'll use uh, the software to show an example of how these are configured. This, um, so at the moment I've got a RT 3000 v3 um, with RT range feature codes enabled, and currently I just have a, a hunter and target, both with polygons. Uh, but as you can see here, there are no multi-sense points enabled. Uh, so the measurements I can get are just the sort of standard uh, longitudinal lateral range, resultant range, target, just the usual polygon to polygon measurements. So now I'm going to go to configure RT range, load the settings from my unit. You can see I've got one fixed point. And multi-sense points are enabled in the range measurement section. Uh, the first thing you need to do is tick this enable multi-sense points button here. So in short, first make sure you've got your uh, polygon set up. Um, get, get that uh, configured first. Just make this slightly bigger for you. Uh, and then you can tick this enable multi-sense points box and it enables this tab in the lower section here. First, you choose how many uh, sense points you want to enable. As I said, you can have up to 12 of these. Uh, for the example, I'm just going to set four up, and they'll sort of appear on this canvas on the right-hand side. And then you have a few different things here that you can configure. Um, so first of all, you can name them. Um, if you have specific sensors and you want to be able to identify uh, which sensor is which in the sort of bird's eye view, then you can give them all a name. And then these forward right options here are just so that you can position these multi sensor points accurately. Uh, these measurements are going to be relative to the polygon origin. Um, so the first thing I would do is I'd recommend you move your polygon origin to somewhere which is accessible and easily sort of measured from. And the way I usually do this is the, these arrows here control where the uh, polygon origin is. So I usually just drag one of these uh, right to the back of the, the rear of the vehicle. And so now my polygon origin, which is this sort of bullseye here, uh, is in the middle of the rear bumper of the car. And that just makes it a lot easier to measure from. Uh, so you can clearly mark on your vehicle uh, where you've put your polygon origin. And then you just want to measure from here uh, to where your sensor is uh, or where you want to put your multi-sensor point. And then you're just going to input those measurements here. Uh, and I recommend doing it this with this method instead of sort of dragging and dropping just because that's not very accurate. Having said that, in this example, I'm just going to drag these around. So the next thing you want to do after you've measured the position of these sensor points relative to your polygon origin uh, as you want to change the heading value. So this is just the direction at which the field of view is going to point out of the multi-sensor point. Um, so I've got multi-sensor points one, two, three, and four. So I'm just going to point them uh, out of the vehicle. So one is going to just remain at zero. So it's just going to be pointing straight ahead. Uh, number two, I'm going to set to 270 degrees. Uh, and that's because the uh, angle goes from zero all the way around to 360 in a clockwise direction. Um, so the left is going to be 270. Um, number three, I'm going to set to 180. So it's pointing backwards. And then number four, which is this one on the right, I just want to be pointing out to the right, which is just going to be 90 degrees. OK, so that's their direction, uh, or heading, as it's known in here. So the next thing you can configure is well, all of these next three fields are to do with the field of view of the sensor. And these, you just want to match to the specifications of each sensor that you're trying to validate. Um, if you 
aren't uh, doing a sensor validation, but you're just looking to get extra measurements from different points of the vehicle, you can just set this to 180 degrees um, so that the sort of field of view full angle is the whole 360 um, instead of sort of refining it to a smaller field of view. Um, so that's if you're not trying to match this field of view with a sensor. The, the benefit of if you're doing a sensor validation, obviously you want the measurements to sort of start outputting when the sensor actually does detect the, the target. Um, but yeah, otherwise you can yeah set this to 180. I'm just going to leave it as 45, or maybe I'll change a couple of these so you can see how it affects the uh, field of view. And then the last two are just the minimum and maximum range of that multi-sensor point. Again, you just want to check the specs of the sensor that you're trying to validate and sort of input the values accordingly. Um, but if you're if you just want to pick up as as much as possible, then you can just obviously set the uh, the minimum uh, field of view to zero and the maximum. I think it goes up to 200 200 meters. Um, I'm just going to set these to 20 here. And then that's all you need to do to uh, configure multi sense points. You can uh, save the configuration, and that would save the polygon and multi sense point combination so that you can use it again. Um, for future tests. So now I'm just going to commit this. And now if I go back to bird's eye view, you can see on the hunter, so I'll just bring this up for you, sorry. So yeah, starting from the RT range software, you just go to real time display, bird's eye view, making sure that the hunter unit that you have is ticked and enabled. And then for multi-sensor points and polygons, you want to be using this origin view. And the origin view is your local coordinates. Uh, so it, it basically plots everything in terms of X and Y. So you need to make sure that you have local coordinates set up. And then here we can see the two polygons, just like we had before, but now if we go to this multi sensor points tab on the sort of hunter multi sensor points, uh, you can see all of the four sensors that I just configured, and I can sort of tick these one by one, and you can see their field of views on the screen. So this data is just the values that we uh, input into the software. To see the actual measurements, we just need to go on to a particular target. So I've only got one target here, so we'll just go to target one. Uh, and this will also have a multi-sensor point tab here. And you can see all of the measurements from the multi-sensor points right here. You can see that because target one is only in sensor two, uh, the other multi-sensor points aren't outputting any distance or any measurements at all. Um, and here you're seeing the distance from uh, the sensor point, so the position that I place that sensor point to the closest point on this target. Um, the whole target is visible, so it can see the full width of the target, uh, but it's only occupying 10% of the field of view, so a lot of the field of view is still available to pick up other targets as well. So all of these measurements are offered on top of the same uh, measurements we had before. So you can see here the distance measurements are uh, different, and that's because this one is coming from the position of the sense point, which is inside the polygon, whereas these measurements are all going to be from the polygon to the polygon. Now we'll just go back to the slideshow. Uh, so this, yeah, this slide is what we've just gone over, uh, and that's actually the end of the presentation. 
Um, cool. Yeah, so that's pretty much all there is to more sense points. Uh, if there's anything else you'd like me to go over in terms of the RT range configuration, I can show you the uh, sort of configuring the polygon side as well, because obviously that's important for configuring more sense points. Uh, so if you're interested in that, just type that into the question bar. Um, and if you have any other questions, of course, let, let, let us know. Um, otherwise, we can end it a little bit early. Right, thank you for that, Kit. I will take a look and see if we've had any questions so far. So, as it stands, it doesn't look as though anybody has uh, sent us any questions in. Although, obviously, since we do have some time left over, uh, we can wait a couple of minutes for anybody to get any additional questions in, including if they particularly want to uh, see the setup for the polygons. Um, otherwise, Obviously, if you guys do think of something later on that you want to ask us, and, and the webinar is already over at that point, then uh, do feel free to uh, get in contact with us in the support team. So you can do that via the support site, so support.oxts.com. You can um, create a ticket to uh, ask your question there, or you can email us directly, uh, so the support team address would be support at oxts.com. Um, and we do have various other webinars that you can watch that are available from the link that is just shown on the slide there. So uh, if there are any other topics that you might be interested in, feel free to sign up to any of those webinars and um, watch those when they come around. And there uh, should be uh, plenty available for that. Uh, let's see if we've got any questions coming yet. Uh, one other thing uh, I can show you before we go um, is if you didn't want to only use this um, area to monitor your multi sensor points measurement, you can, of course, add them to your real time display here. Uh, so, currently, the measurements which are configured are just the polygons, polygon measurements. Um, so, you can either edit this current display page or you can create a new one uh, from scratch and just add the measurements that you want there. Um, but I'll just show you how to edit the sort of pre-configured pre one. So if you just click on configure display in the display data section, um, you can have multiple windows. So at the moment you just have this one window, but if you want um, additional windows with measurements on, you can add windows here. Uh, but if you just want to add measurements to your existing window, um, you simply go to window one and then click the add measurements button. Um, the RT range unit that you have connected to the real time display should be already selected here. Um, otherwise, you can enable more streams. Uh, so, if there are multiple units that you have on the network and you want measurements from all of them, just enable more streams here. And then all of the multi sensor points uh, messages are in the sensor points box at the top, at uh, the bottom, sorry, and you can see there are a lot of measurements here. So just expand that and you can see that you can get the, basically the distance uh, from each sensor point to each target. So it's going to have 2D distance to target one from sensor points one to 12, but also you're going to have the same for target two, target three and target four. Uh, so I'm just going to add that one for the moment. Uh, and you'll see it just gets added to the bottom here. If you click OK, then you should be able to see measurement here. But because I chose sensor one um, and there's no target in sensor one, then that's just showing this blank data here. So if I just change that again to use sensor two, then you'll see the actual measurement. There we go. So now you can see that the actual measurement is shown here and it's showing alongside any measurements that you wished to see.
Okay, well, as, as far as I can tell, we still haven't had any questions from our audience. So um, I just want to say thank you for listening to everybody. And uh, I guess that's possibly a good place to end it if, uh, if nobody's going to send in any questions for the moment. Cool. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.